May I have your attention, please? What's up with you guys? This your boy still sending me back here for another wrestling reaction, man. And I ain't been doing wrestling reactions at all, man. So you know what? Hey, bro, I I got some free time. You know what I'm saying? So for my wrestling fans, I'm getting back into them wrestling reactions. So I'm getting back into them CTW reactions. Uh, I'ma start re uh, wrestling moves that made you go holy ish. Um, I'ma start that maybe. Actually, maybe after this video, just cause, um, I'ma start doing, uh, wrestlers be botching. I've seen, like, you know, some botches or whatnot. Those, those are actually pretty funny. So, I can't wait to get started, man. But, we're gonna get into a topic that has been highly discussed around this time, right? So, if y'all know, Kofi Kingston almost won the WWE Championship at Elimination Chamber, right? And it caused for an uproar to be to make Kofi Kingston a WWE champion. And if you know how I feel, you know how this is going to go. It's I'm sorry to say this for you guys, but Kofi Kingston is never going to be WWE championship championship. Kofi Kingston is never going to be a WWE champion. You want to know why he's never going to be a WWE champion? Because Vince McMahon is racist of having black people be a WWE champion in the face of the WWE. And and people and you guys seen some of those, you know, you know, reactions I would do to the pay-per-views live and everything. And you would be like, look, he's not racist. Well, I want you to look at some right here. Understand this. Kofi Kingston's been in the WWE for over 10 years. I know. It's been crazy that I've been watching this for over 10 years now. And it's crazy looking at it. Um, Kofi Kingston had put on a great performance in February. You want to know why he put on such a great performance in February? It was because it was Black History Month. And you want to know something else crazy? Mustafa Ali was going to be in that elimination chamber before then, before he didn't get injured. But you want to know something that sucks? It takes some some nerve to make Mustafa Ali inside of an elimination chamber before you get somebody like Kofi Kingston or Biggie Langston inside of it before then. Like, and I know Kofi Kingston was in an elimination chamber once. I get that. But it takes a level of nerve just to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Just to back him out of that stuff. And I want to show you <laughs> this video, right? So we got 10 most racist WWE moments ever, all right? And I'm doing that strictly for you guys. So um, I'm probably going to give a description of why I think WWE is racist after this video but seeing the length of it it is 14 minutes and uh 37 seconds so i might just go ahead and just edit it off that and then do a whole nother video the next time all right so we gonna go ahead we gonna get into this video all right let's do it but culture. culture it's hard <laughs> to be a wwe fan sometimes back in the day it was you know it's fake right Hey, that was a terrible feeling to get hit with. That felt like a direct attack on our intelligence. But it's 2017, and we don't really get that question very often anymore. We get something more complex, something not based on intellect, but morality. You know wrestling is racist, right? Damn. In my personal opinion, <laughs> I don't believe the art form is inherently racist, but there's almost, no, there's definitely no arguing that many things, at least the top company in the world of wrestling has done that have been crazy racist. It Wild is. racism was happening on our screens for the past three decades, and in order to progress as you people can't tell and me as there wrestling are, fans, there we have isn't, to visit man. the missteps and discuss just what the hell went wrong. Here are the 10 you can't tell most me there's no racist racism. WWE moments 
ever. All right, before we start, a couple of dishonorable mentions, and just that they aren't a single moment. All of Charles Wright's characters. Papa Shango, a villain who practices voodoo on his opposition. Kama Mustafa, a gold chain wearing militant black man who joins a stable in the 90s known as the Nation of Domination who mirror the Black Panthers and the godfather of pimp who brings his, his words not mine, hoes to the ring and offers his opposition a night with one and sometimes many of them to forfeit the match. I also have to point out Scott Hall, the bad guy, the white guy, playing Razor Ramon. Not a good look, my dude, but actually you played so white I knew, Okay, so I knew, I knew Scott Hall so was just straight white. Dude. It made you millions, yeah. but f*** you, bro. It's 2017. It's been f*** you, so f*** you then. All right, let's get into this list. Wait, there also have been no WWE champions who have been Thank black you. in history outside of The Rock. What and The Rock doesn't WWE. even claim being black in WWE. Fuck? It's 2017. How could this happen? How are we here right now? Thankfully, at least we have an Indian WWE champion in Jinder Mahal right now, who was offered absolutely Jinder, no credible bet hey, at all. Hey, I'm sorry to break it to you. Jinder Mahal, so maybe Jinder Mahal's not Indian. He's WWE actually Canadian. In history, also a non-white competitor. Thanks a lot, WWE. You're full of shit, you motherfuckers. All right, let's get into this. Jinder Mahal's Canadian. Show you some more. Fuck. Number ten, Gold Dust comes to the ring in blackface. Soul Dust is a character created by the ever-changing Gold Dust, who came to the ring in different ring attire and personality every week. Also known as the artist formerly known as Gold Dust, the name referencing Prince's name change in the late 1990s. So in this particular, I don't know night, Warner Dust Brothers is to or face something. Flash Funk, a black wrestler whose name suggests that yes, he is indeed a black wrestler. So Gold Dust comes to the ring in a fur coat with a boombox over his shoulder with an afro wig a gold chain and in full blackface not a lot more to say about this, this as it wasn't up, a bro. part of a bigger storyline thank well this God, was back in yep, the time where people got no you know less offended about stuff a black guy. so okay all right also the match is thrown away in disqualification so basically there's no reason for even a match at all either flash funk didn't get the rub gold dust doesn't look like a threat just racism for ratings great Number Fox nine, News, the amen to that. debut. Psychosis, Juventud, Guerrera, and Super Crazy. Three of the most talented cruiserweights of their time. I don't care what you guys say. These dudes were dope. Trumpet riff and ECW and WWE. Lawnmowers calling themselves the Mexicools. Now, but the look, problem if we didn't was. Have the context of WWE's booking and backstage situation being hugely racially motivated, this would actually be you. fucking badass. I mean, if this was Psychosis, who turned them into Super a comical. Invention, if the stable was a means of getting their power back by shoving a Mexican stereotype down America's throats, then that's incredible. I would have been with it heavy. Especially in a time when we had Eddie and Ray Ray as top talent. And Eddie Guerrero created created a lot of cheating and stealing. For the stable to be would have been perfect. And walk hand in hand with the comic relief of the show. Should have just brought back the LWO, man. What disappointing booking and what a disappointing story the Mexicals were given. Number eight, Kayantai Castrate Val Venus. God, this one is so hard to Wait. talk about. All right, so in storyline, Val this? Venus is a porn star. Kai and I remember is a Val group Venus. including some of the best wrestlers oh. wrapped into an Asian stereotype. Val Venus begins sleeping with Yamaguchi san's kayfabe wife in response. Oh. Kai and Tai jobs out to him for a couple weeks. Val was then betrayed by Takamichinoku, who joins Kai and Tai because he's also Japanese, which brings Kai and Tai out on an episode of Raw where Yamaguchi san has a sword and I a remember this. block, and he yells into the microphone at Val. <sighs> choppy, choppy. choppy. His pee pee. Bro, <laughs> 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 well, beyond races. You can't time, rip later this. Later on in the night, Kai and Tai kidnaps Val Venus and cuts his dick off. They cut his dick off. As if the ever prevalent narrative <laughs> of emasculating Asian men being perpetuated wasn't enough. The villains here in the story. Now, the guy whose wife left him is a villain, responds by cutting. Val Venus's dick off. Typical Vince McMahon fashion. And cuckolds. Asian guy. Asian guy is bad guy. Cuts white guy's dick off. That happened. That happened. In, that and happened. Vince let it happen. Happened. Like, Number right? Seven, the one man <laughs> gang debuts as Akeem the African Dream. Do I remember this? White dude is repackaged as African dude. Mean Gene I remember introduces that. dude by venturing daringly into a back alley where black people playing such stereotypes as skeleton jewelry and war paint dancing girls as well as boombox over the shoulder man who yells words like 
behold, together they dance in a circle around a trash bin on fire and they summon Akeem the African Dream, who's a white dude. Dude then spends his what entire career dancing in a goofy way. What? This dude. Also, since this has happened, the WWE has continually acknowledged and celebrated it happening, which is very weird. Why did they do that? Number six, Triple H buries Booker T. Oh, if you know anything about Triple is, H, you know he's notorious for burying his opponents and allegedly using I get his triggered by this. means to never lose. All right, so it's 2003. Wrestling is fucking is hot as shit, really, and so is Dwayne Every Durant time I get Johnson triggered by this, man, I can't even talk Rocky about this. Rocky is thrown over the top rope in a battle royal to determine who will face the world champion at Mania a couple months out. Huge move on WWE's part to push Booker. Booker comes out the following month and is met with the world champion Triple H who he'll be facing at the pay-per-view now Hunter grabs a mic and he says this thing and I'm, I'm about to say that it's a really this. hard thing to say but this is just, this is what he says Booker I think you're a little bit confused about your role in life here the fact is Booker somebody like and then he looks him up and down you doesn't get to be world champion you see people like you don't deserve it that's reserved for people like me see book oh, See, Book, that's where the confusion is. You're not here to be a competitor. You're here to be an entertainer. So why don't you entertain? Do a little dance for me, Book. Come on, Book. Dance. Entertain me. That's basically how Vince Pretty says to Triple big H dudes now. America's like, great call, Lee. Of minstrel shows being prominent in white entertainment, Brodus which Clay? is fucking horrible. It is 2003 when this is happening. 2003. So, goddamn, what a build for a Mania match, right? To see Booker T kick this racist's ass. Exactly. Take his gold That's the plan. What a progressive company we have right here, right? Yeah, Triple H fucking squashes Booker T in the biggest event of the year, in one of the biggest matches of the year. Booker is dropped from the world title scene moving forward. This is at Wrestle fucking Mania. It isn't until, and you can't make this shit And up. Vince Booker let that T happen. Speaking in an English accent and calling himself a king that he climbs back up to the world title scene. And I keep on telling WWE. people this. Number five, he, DX mocked the no, nation I'll, domination I'll let that in sit blackface. For a little bit. Triple H is in this one too, no way. The guy whose symbol looks like this? The heir to the entire company when Vince's bastard racist body finally fails? Goodness. Billy Gunn as the godfather saying pimps up, hose down, and brown face. Triple H also in brown face as the croc, a parody of Rocky. No, no, no this isn't racist. This was just straight Xbox funny. In blackface as Mizark. This is what? I mean, I'm not counting this because this was actually really funny. And uh, if you look at for these white dudes embarrassing and if you look at, uh, you know, the rock in the nation of domination in the back, their entire they were actually laughing about it because that was the plan has done. This is top 10, but that's a different list for a different time. All the fucking accents they mimic black culture with. Just a gross piece of television and probably celebrated backstage to this day. Fuck, all right. These next. All right. All right. That's all right, that's because right. that's because the rock four, and everybody else was time, steel straight. leaders possessions. I'm fine with crime it. time. So let's talk about crime time. Crime time. The most racial crime time. Crime time consists of JTG and Shad, two black men dressed like 50 Cent, whose gimmick is that they are black and they commit crimes. Dressed like 50 Cent? Thanks a lot for that. <sighs> there isn't a single segment that they have ever been a part of that isn't just racist television. They're constantly berated with racist jokes by white wrestlers. They're constantly involved in segments where they're made to look like stereotypes, like trying to sell each other stolen items or invalid items like Royal Rumble entry tickets. Doesn't even make sense. They like brought what? Out a George W. Bush impersonator, which was an entire like 10 minute segment of the president saying stereotypically black things. The impersonator calls Condoleezza Rice one hot little black bitch. They invade King Booker's room with an oh snap free food and Charmel the cuisine is the bomb. Just like the fucking corniest shit imaginable. They notably stole Let him just say what he gotta say, bro. To put big booty girls in the back and put big rims on it. It's like an infinite segment situation. Like every fucking segment. It's like infinite. They entertained a bunch of old white people at an old folks home by singing Christmas carols about crackheads, rolling dice, and robbing all the whites. The scene ends with the old white woman saying that she will bust a cap in your ass. Honestly, just researching this shit was fucking horrible. I feel like a thousand <laughs> times less cool just doing this the promo vignettes of crime time just has them robbing a restaurant even just hearing the cringy yeah yo 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 and like the freaky freaky like record scratching <laughs> it's, like, it's like every 
everything. All the bad everything things. was just terrible. Like they took all the and by the way, they didn't win those they tag teams. The they stole them from it's another like WWE just, they just decided team. They just to make the worst in typical thing racial ever. Anyway, uh, stereotype, one of the best stereotypical of the fashion. time, Lita wrestles her final fucking match as a string of neck injuries. Oh, I remember this. Her to an early retirement, and Crime Time steals her lingerie and embarrasses her as a send off. Number three, Vince McMahon drops the end bomb. Type in Vince McMahon N word in YouTube. Pretty much says it all. John Cena hits Eric Bischoff with a little homophobia while in his hip hop gimmick. All right, that shit alone is racist as f to be honest. But Vince walks Nah, up, John says, Cena just good? knew how to rap. Keep it up, my N word to John Cena, the white guy who is the face of the company, performing as a character inspired by black culture. Vince then smiles ear to ear, walks by Booker T and his wife Charmel, the same Booker T who was denied being. You want to know something crazy about this? In storyline because of his race vince you know something crazy about this everybody was perfectly them. fine about this says, and that's because if they talked out of it then they would have had got dropped to the like to the mid card why, or something why why was this a thing why did this happen why why do this i don't understand why do this oh fuck. number two oh fuck. number two Muhammad Hassan, the Muslim terrorist, is killed off. I know this tops like so, 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 so many lists on YouTube, but dude is an Italian American who plays a Muslim terrorist post 9 11 and feuds with only top talent upon the debut to get the last ride from The Undertaker into he was born. He was It was made for him to just... TV again. What was the point of this? If like, not to just all jokes aside, he was made outright. to get killed off. Absolutely no stars. Nobody benefited from his presence as he only ever feuded with already established talent just to be killed off television. Exactly. He was... Had expressed that it's unfair it was a setup from the jump. Seen as terrorists in America, which is great until you remember that he's a fucking Italian American named Mark playing a fucking bad guy. Number one, Roddy Piper paints himself half black. I mean, you knew it had to be on this list. At WrestleMania 6, Roddy Piper faced Bad News Brown. Oh, I heard the about story this. Goes, Vince, Pat Patterson, and Bad News himself pulled Piper aside and said, Hot Rod, we want you to face Bad News Brown at next year's Mania. Piper had admitted to immediately saying, I'm going to paint myself half black. Bad News was, at this time, a former heavyweight amateur athletic union judo champion. This man was the first black man to win a solo Olympic Games medal in a sport other than boxing or track and field. He was trained as a professional wrestler by Inoki. Bad News Brown was the real fucking deal. So he's granted a WrestleMania match with one of the biggest draws in the company. And the first thing the Hot Rod says is, I'm going to paint myself half black. And the first thing that Vince McMahon says in response... I love you. Bad News, in interview about these events, has claimed this meeting never happened and that management had to call him and tell him Piper was going to paint himself half black. Bad News then felt he couldn't dispute it because it would just mean they would take him off the card. So he went along with it knowing that exactly. he was going to get his, whether it be from himself or somebody around the towns they tour. On top of this, management then wanted Hot Rod to put Bad News Brown over and Roddy refused resulting in the Mania match to end in a double countout, leaving no victor. And just to square everything up in this racist bullshit that it is, Piper was paid $50,000 for the match, and bad news, 10 grand. Now, not only did Hot Rod wrestle the match in blackface, but he cut all the promos painted half black as well. In one of them, he has a conversation with himself and his impersonation of bad news in which he insults his intelligence, speaks in an accent that is like the cringiest thing I've ever seen, and then he raises his fist and he says he will be wrestling for black power, but not for black power for bad news brown, but black power for himself and Nelson Mandela. Holy sh**. Well, that was fucked up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Jesus. Dog. Christ. I can't promote myself after this fucking sh**. All right, bye. Yeah, man. Ain't no more to it, bro. Dude, that's just some of the racial moments, bro. But, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right here. You're gonna see a video after this one, and it's going to uh be me basically just saying why I think WWE has always been racist and the reasons on why they've been racist, all right? So anyways, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and share this with your friends. But until then, it's your boy still sending me each. I'm out.